Today I'm going to play with some new stencils. Welcome back friends. So I just designed some new stencils and mask stencils. Not sure what to call them. But anyway, I'm using them for the first time today along with two different weights of Yasutomo paper and some other paper that I purchased for inkjet printing. It's a bit pricey, but um, prints really beautifully and I think and it's just the right weight of paper. So I think I might be using that. So anyway, let's watch while I use my new stencils. Okay, so I made some new stencils. So this is a mask actually big one it's going to overpower this plate but we're going to work on the nine by the i mean the eight by ten actually all of these no this one's good this is good for this size plate i think that one's a lot of fun that can also it could be either a stencil or a mask i don't know this is uh Either way, I think. <laughs> I think this one's a lot of fun. And it comes with um, some extra pieces. You know, the cutouts. I always try to include those when I can. This one, I, I should include, it's only two little pieces, but um, this is an interesting shape, so why not? Then, I loved this one so much that I thought maybe if I made it smaller, and I offered two in a pack, so that is this. I think they can interplay really well on the plate. I'm, I'm thinking I'm gonna like this best. It incorporates the circles that I love, but also these odd shapes that happen when you cut out circles. So it's um, kind of like almost a Matisse inspired shape that I then cut circles out of. I'm very, very pleased with these smaller ones although the big one now I haven't I haven't gel printed with any of these yet so I have not tried them and to see you know how well they work on the plate um, this one is also just recently released and has become a quick favorite of mine so this might be I pulled this you know fresh clean one out because that might be an interesting design to mix with this. You know, so we have these kind of shapes coming through. So I'm hoping that I'm gonna like that combination. Same thing with this. I think that could be a lot of fun. Um, anyway, we'll see. That's what this session's gonna be about. Now I'm gonna use different kinds of paper. I have I have this paper, that's the 6H, the Yasutomo. I don't, not, not go, I'm happy with the way it prints. I'm unhappy with the thickness. So I'm still in the market for a rice paper. Now, the same brand, Yasutomo, makes another one that is a six, I cut them in half. It's a 6JM, and it comes in a 12 by 18 pack. It is, th it is thinner paper, as you can see. And the prints don't come out quite as nice as they did on the Art Advantage paper, but um, I'm gonna try it again. Uh, last time I tried it, worked out pretty good. Then I bought this paper because it's supposed to be inkjet. Um, it's Japanese paper that you can print um, with your inkjet printer. I wasn't really happy with the way that came out. They looked flat. They didn't look as vibrant as I wanted them to look, but it, it does seem like um, a nice rice paper. It has a smooth side and a rough side. It is a nice weight. So I'm, it's, a, it's expensive. I, I can't remember how much I paid. But, um, but if it works, I'm, I'm willing to 
I'm willing to do it. So anyway, I'm going to try just two sheets for now. And so we're just going to play around different, different kinds of paper and see how we like things. I'm going to start, I think, with, um, making a simple ghost of this. So I'm going to get, I'm still going to use my deli paper because I want the ghost. Oh, about a wrinkled one. So it's funny, I was looking on Amazon yesterday at this deli paper and some of the comments, the reviews, I should say, not comments. Um, and somebody said that it was not good for gel printing. Oh my God. This is like the best paper I find for gel printing because it you don't have to wait too long. And look at how well it picks up. I'm just gonna get a little bit more in there. So I don't know what, what they're talking about, but I love it. Anyway, now I have a nice ghost. I'm gonna wait for this to dry. I want to use one of the other stencils and it's going to do the subtractive method. It is going to pick up some of this stuff in places. <clears throat> so I'm not sure which one I'm going to do next. Maybe I will try one of the big masks. Big mask stencil, whatever you want to call it. Let's use the one with the curves in it. I might do Indian yellow or actually maybe manganese blue. I'm going to wait for it to dry. I'm back to using my golden today. I probably shouldn't. should save that for painting. But I definitely do like it on the gel plate as, as well as the Nova paint. Okay, I'm not going to wait. So that first color was quinacridone red. I'm going to use this blue. Now because I put it on so lightly, it, my brayer picked up some. We've got some grungy stuff going on here. Okay, I'm going to take another piece of deli. fun is that? Okay, and then we'll probably pick this up with the yellow. So I'm going to let it dry. You know what I might do is um, I, I wish I had added some texture in here. Well, I'd have to do that on the next layer. So maybe we're going to add the blue again. We'll put more, we'll layer down more blue. I don't think I've ever done that where I put one color in twice. Now that might, when it overlays, that's going to make this blue darker, I'm assuming. And this is going to be lighter and we're going to add a texture in here. I don't think I've ever done this, but this particular stencil slash mask has big openings and it's inspiring me to do something a little different. So I still have to wait for it to dry, so I'll be right back. Okay, this is the texture I'm gonna use. Unfortunately, I cannot help you find this. I got it at Michael's, but they no longer sell it. Um, I just peeled off a lot of this. Look at this fabulous, this fabulous piece that I'm gonna be able to use for collage. This one I love because it has some variation in colors in here. So I think it's going to be beautiful in a collage. Anyway, 
I have to put it in a safe place, obviously. My desk is getting so ruined. <laughs> anyway, let's see. Just curious what's going to happen. Overlaying the blue. And this manganese blue does bloom a little bit. And I accidentally put my, oh, let's do a little bit of double in here. So we're gonna pick this up with Indian yellow after it dries, but I am loving this deli paper too, with these odd shapes. So, so far we have two deli papers. I can never get enough of these. All right, so we're gonna take down, we're gonna take the Indian yellow. Okay, so this is that inkjet printable rice paper. I'm gonna try this one. I hope I'm not gonna regret that because I think this would have been a nice print. And I'm gonna wait two full minutes just because this seems like the same kind of weight as the Art Advantage paper and maybe it will react the same way. So obviously by adding the Indian yellow on t uh, over the blue, we're going to get a green. But I think it's going to be really beautiful and I'm hoping that this paper is great. Okay, it's been two minutes. Wow, this paper is excellent for the gel plate. All right, so we got two different shades. And of course, everything went green. We've got like burgundy color here. This is very different for what I, maybe a little too much texture. I got, I got kind of over, carried away because I got a little fingerprint there. Maybe I should have let more blooming happen. Look how pretty that is. We definitely have some interesting shapes going on here. And we got that subtractive, you know, from our ghost we subtracted. And maybe it would have been more interesting to do the other way around. So we're gonna try that as well. And I'm very happy with this paper, I'll tell you. I have to go look and see how much it costs per sheet because they're only like, um, I think it's a nine by 12 sheet and there wasn't a lot of paper in that pack. So something is telling me it's probably expensive. Okay, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna do it in reverse, but I'm gonna use a different, I'm gonna use this one this time. I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna mix this with a little bit of Indian yellow. That should give us a really pretty color. So this time we're going for the ghost. ghost with some lacing going on so that'll be interesting okay now this time 
we're going to subtract using this. And I'm going to use some Hansa yellow, which will make this even more orange in spots. And I should have waited for it to dry. <laughs> I didn't. Oh, I might have to start over. Or it might, might be a happy accident. Okay, again, deli paper. Well, maybe I'll just use this one. An overlay. Ooh, that's fun. I love what's going on right here. Okay, let's get a second sheet and get a cleaner pick up here. There we go. Okay. Ooh, look how pretty that is. Um, you will see some subtractiveness. Oh, yes, this is going to be very interesting. We're going to pick this up with a, another color. I'm not exactly sure yet what that is, but we're going to wait for it to dry this time. Okay, it feels like it's dry. This is some, this is Nova color, and this is some red iron oxide mixed with titanium white. So anything mixed with titanium white, especially a heavy titanium white, is going to give you a beautiful, it's a beautiful pickup. Um, it, titanium white just really picks up all of the paint. Sometimes when you use these more transparent colors, they cannot pick up the additional layers that are on your plate. At least that's been my experience, um, especially Indian yellow. I'm surprised I even got a decent pickup on this one. But it's also this great paper. I'm going to have to buy more of it. Okay, again, I'm going to wait two minutes and I'll be right back. Okay, I accidentally waited a little longer than two minutes but it's still held up. I mean, sometimes when you wait too long with the plate, you lose, you know, your paper sticks to it. So this, this paper's holding up really well. Um, I don't like the color background that I chose. I do like the um, subtractive in the order that I did this time. I think this works better and it'll be better with um, other colors. So we're gonna, it's the second time I tried to use this that I didn't like it. So, probably would have been better off with white even, or a really, really pale yellow to offset this other yellow. So I might pull out some Nova paints and work with some different colors. I think I need to put more, this is Payne's Gray. I think I need to put more in. As you can see, these were the colors I was using the day of my little mishap in the studio. Paint went everywhere and all my bottles are covered. Okay, so let's um, let's do something really contrasty by using Payne's Gray. Okay, I'm gonna to switch to voice over and speed this up a little bit. This will be a very, very long video, but I, I promise not to speed it up too much. So I'm starting with Payne's Gray, which is a nice, you know, contrasty, really, really dark blue. And, um, we're going to also subtract from there, so we'll see what, see how it goes. I'm going to pick up with my deli paper. I love how I get that little line that goes around uh, when I make my ghosts. So this is Nova Color Yellow Green. I didn't mix it with anything else. I don't even think I mixed it with a little bit of white. It's just like right out of the jar. It's a beautiful color. Very bright, vibrant. And I'm going to just go over that last deli sheet 
We might as well overlay these. Why not? I'm going to just try to pick up a little bit more, clean it up a little bit. Nova color dries really fast. I keep saying I'm going to add some retarder to the paints, but I'm, I'm a little nervous about how much I should add. I don't want it to take too long to dry either. But I am going to give that a try. But anyway, we're going to let this dry before we move on to our next color, which is probably going to be that uh, teal color. So on this bottle, I do have the blue-green mixed with a little bit of titanium white. I wanted to lighten it up a little bit. And I think in this case, I moved on to the Yasutomo, the thinner paper, the one that is the 12 by 18 sheet that I cut in half. So we're going to give this two minutes and then I'll be right back. So on this one, I think the teal is still too dark. So the, the vibrant green is just not popping over this uh, teal color. Maybe if I had added a little bit more white, it would have been better. So on this next one, I'm going to try my, um, my circle cutout ones. I still haven't named any of these, so hopefully by the time I go to add them to my website, they will be named. So I'm starting with the teal. Okay, so this is, I think, Hansa Yellow, or Cadmi Yellow, excuse me. And so I'm just putting the stencils in a different direction this time. I'm going to use my deli paper to overlay. So a lot of times with masks, I like to use the same mask and just use it in a different way on the second layer. And what, the way they overlap makes interesting shapes. And now I'm going to pick up with a Titan Buff. And this is that same paper, the Yasutomo 6H. It's a, the thinner one. And I'm going to wait two minutes before I pull. I lost a little bit of paint right there on the plate. But for the most part, this paper is working out. And we have some fun deli paper, too. Okay, so I decided to um, mix up a, a, a pale color. So I have this, um, this blue. I think this is the cerulean blue. And I'm using these cone cups now as my funnels because I, I don't have like a utility sink that I can just go and, you know, clean out a funnel in between. So I just cut a little tip on the corner and then I can, um, you know, pour my paints in and then squeeze out what's left at that very bottom tip into, into the container and then throw out the cup and they're, they're made out of paper. So, and they're very inexpensive. You can get them on Amazon, um, a whole bunch of them, and it's, uh, in my opinion, better than a funnel. So I usually just shake these up. I don't bother to like stick a stick in there and 
I should put little ball bearings in there or something to help it mix a little bit better. But, um, and it was, it looks really light on the plate, but it was still too dark, in my opinion, anyway. I wanted to see just what color it looked. See, it, it just looks darker. Anyway, it's already mixed, so I'm going to go with it. But one of these days I want to mix up a bunch of very pale pickup colors. I like how this is like an uneven ghost. Okay, so this next layer is the Indian yellow. And now we're going to pick up with my paler blue. And again, we're going to wait two minutes before we pick up. So I'm choosing two minutes, but you need to test your own paint versus paper and see what works, especially with the temperature in your room, the humidity, all of the above, um, because it may be very different where you live. But for me, I found that the two minutes was like the perfect timing. We have very cold room from the air conditioning. Um, I'm using fast drying paint and rice paper. You might be using a thicker paper and your paint might be slower drying, you know, like in Amsterdam. So now I'm moving on to carbon black as my super contrast. And I'm using the larger mask. So whenever you get new stencils, new masks, you know, also look through your other stencils and see what might, you know, work well with this, you know, like mix them up and just, you know, play, make it a play session and just, you know, see what kind of results you get. I'm waiting for this black to completely dry because if we don't, we're gonna have a, a, a mess. And it's still activated a little bit. You can see from the brayer sheet, it, it mixed a little bit with the black, even though I waited. I love that deli sheet. It has, you know, that subtractive like I talked about. But look at the results of what it left behind. So definitely mix up your masks and your stencils. You know, like bigger areas and smaller with smaller patterns. But look at that deli paper. That's going to be fun in something. And this deli paper does go very transparent, as long as you're not going over a really dark color. If I try to paste it over black, I will see it. But other colors, totally transparent. Okay, so I forgot to record part of this, but um, anyway, this is the nice deli paper. And this is what happened. So I was using the Yasutomo 6H paper, which is the thicker paper, and a lot of the paper just like stuck to the plate. I got a phone call, I had to answer, 
I left it maybe four or five minutes and when I went to pull all of that paper just came up so I didn't want to like waste what was on the plate so I laid down some Titan buff and I'm using the 6-H paper again and oh maybe that other paper was I don't I don't know I'm confused now which which paper that I'm using but I I think I'm definitely using the thicker paper this must have been the thinner paper um, on the pickup but I laid down a pretty heavy coat of the Titan buff over what was left on the plate which is just what is missing from that print and I'm leaving it for a good five minutes and we'll see what happens hopefully it will pick up so I don't like to waste anything because sometimes these these things that happen create great papers and I think this is a case where we have something very interesting happening here so that is going to be a great starting background for a collage it's I love the grunge around the edges um, all of it it's like an old wall it's better than the actual print that I was trying to make um, yeah that was definitely the thinner paper the one that that pulled away so those thinner papers cannot handle like four minutes on the plate you will definitely lose some paper so now I'm just going to lay down on the back side of this beautiful deli sheet because I absolutely love it but I wanted to put some transparent um, I think this is Indian yellow underneath on the underside and look at how rich and gorgeous that is Okay, I'm going to do one more. This is the quinacridone red. I'm going to mix a little bit of Hansi Yellow in with that. And I'll actually, I'm going to go over a deli sheet that I had already made. This is just to pick up the inside of those, um, the inside parts of that stencil, leaving me with the ghost. And now I'm just going to lay that ghost over this other deli sheet. So at the end of the so session, sometimes I just start playing with the deli sheets and seeing what I can do. And I'm laying this on the back side of this deli sheet. So it's still going to be a transparent paper. It's just going to be transparent with color because the Indian yellow especially is a very transparent color and since I had more on left on the plate I decided to pick it up sort of a grungy grungy mix in the background there that's nice And so what the fine grunge that's on there now, I, I still, I want to pick it up. Now I had a little bit of wet paint on my brayer as well, so it mixed in a little bit. And we're just going to see if we can get a nice background color. I don't like to waste any, anything interesting on the plate, even if it's a fine texture, because I will definitely need that at some point so that's like a nice you know kind of like yellowish neutral color that I can have in my in my stash and you never know um, when I'm gonna need that
Thanks for watching this gel printing session. As you know, I'm also a mixed media artist, collage artist. I'm not sure how to classify what I do. I do fabric mosaic. And if you're interested in me showing you a little bit behind the scenes, I'm thinking about incorporating them in the end of my videos. So let me know in the comments below if that's something that you would be interested in seeing. So in the meantime, don't forget to create, inspire, and share, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.